Guns, tap in. All right, y'all, man. Today we got, as you can tell by the title, Rosa Parks was a plant. And I always heard, you know, stuff like this. You know, people saying that she was placed there to be the face for this movement. And um, I did a little research. Actually found out that there was this young girl named Claudette Colvin who's actually was the first to not give up her seat. And that's how it all started. But, you know, due to, like, where she was from, the way her life was, and, you know, I don't want to give out too, inf too much information. But, you know, so just stick with me. We're going to get into this video. Let's do it. Black artists, activists, and historians have seen their work lost, stolen, or simply forgotten about for centuries. There's a lot of stories out there that have yet to been told or have only been told from one perspective. When it comes to the Montgomery bus boycotts and the civil rights movement of the 1960s, one would assume that those in charge would preserve history and commend those who pushed the movement for equality forward. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case, as evidenced by the story of Claudette Colvin, a young black girl who was the first person to refuse to give up her seat to a white woman on a bus. That's right. Before Rosa Parks, there was Claudette Colvin. Parks was chosen as the face of the Montgomery. So she was the first black person to not give up, to refuse to give up a seat, you know, to a white person. So for anybody who thought Rosa Parks was the first, you know, that debunks that statement, that, you know, statement or history right there. She wasn't the first. And um, this just is what it is. But she was the face of a movement. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to downplay history or what what they did back then to, you know, push the push the uh, race forward to bring equality to the race during that time. But she wasn't the first. This is just facts. Montgomery bus boycotts for a variety of reasons. Facts that I Leaving didn't know. Colvin largely know that forgotten about a lot of people probably didn't know civil either. rights leaders, the city of Montgomery and the general public. Colvin took a stand for what she believed in, and it's a shame that her inspirational story is hard to find in the history books. I'm Symphony Thompson, and this is A Story You Should Know. While a student at the segregated Booker T. Washington High School in Montgomery, Alabama, Claudette Colvin took the bus home frequently. Due to segregation laws at the time, seats in the front of the bus were designated for white passengers, and seats in the back of the bus were for black passengers. Blacks were also allowed to sit in the middle, but if one white person wanted to sit in the middle, then all the black people in that row were supposed to get up and move further back. That's but crazy. on March 2nd, 1955, when a white woman walked onto a Montgomery bus without anywhere to sit, the bus driver Robert W. Clare demanded that Colvin and three other black women move to the back. The other women moved, but Claudette did not. Reflecting on that day, Colvin said, all I remember is that I was not going to walk off the bus voluntarily. If it had been for an old lady, I would have got up. But it wasn't. I was sitting on the last seat that they said you could sit in. I didn't get up because I didn't feel like I was breaking the law. However, after the white woman entered the bus, another black woman, Ruth Hamilton, who was also pregnant, got on the bus and sat next to Colvin. He asked us both to get up. Mrs. Hamilton said she was not going to get up and that she paid her fare and that she didn't feel like standing. So I told him I was not going to get up either. So he said, if you're not going to get up, I would get a policeman. When the cops arrived on the bus, they convinced a black man to give up his seat for the pregnant Hamilton. Colvin still decided to remain in her seat, and she was taken into custody. Philip Hoos' book, Claudette Colvin Twice Toward Justice, tells the story. So basically, she felt like she wasn't breaking the law, which she wasn't, due to the rules or how they had to sit. But she just wasn't down with giving up her seat for a white woman. I mean, she even said if it would have been an older lady, she would have got up. She just wasn't with the bullshit that day. She probably was just tired. They say she was pregnant, 15, um, and just, just you know, didn't want didn't to do nothing. Like, she probably wasn't even thinking about, oh, I'm going to start a movement and this and that. Then when the police showed up, they even, the police even got someone, a black guy, to give up his seat for her, and she still wasn't moving. So she was standing on business and standing on what she believed was right. And I can't do nothing but respect that. ...of Colvin and further detail. The policemen grabbed Colvin and ushered her off the bus. She didn't fight back, but continued to scream, It's my constitutional right. right. It's my constitutional right to sit here as much as that lady. 
I paid my fare. It's my constitutional right. Colvin was taken to City Hall where she was charged with misconduct, resisting arrest, assaulting a police officer, and violating the city's segregation laws. Going back to her feelings on that historical day, she said, it just killed me to leave the bus. I hated to give that white woman my seat when so many black people were standing. I was crying hard. The cops put me in the back of the police car and shut the door. All the ride long. Oh, that's why she didn't get up because there were so many black people standing. So, I mean, she she took a stand for real, you know. But I didn't think, she, I don't know if she thought, if she knew that it would start a whole civil rights movement, you know. So, shout out, shout out to Claudette Colvin. Never heard of her before yesterday. Came across this video. And uh, I know a lot of people haven't heard of her because all we know is Rosa Parks. But she is like the true pioneer to not giving up your seat. They swore and ridiculed me. They took turns guessing my bra size and cracked jokes about parts of my body. Colvin was eventually released and went back home. Upon her arrival, her neighbors surrounded her with support. But I was afraid that night too. I had stood up to a white bus driver and two white cops. I had challenged the bus law. There had been lynchings and cross burnings for that kind of thing. It would have been easy for the Klan to come up the hill in the night. Dad sat up all night long with his shotgun. We all stayed up. Time for trial finally came. Colvin pleaded innocent, but was found guilty. She was released on indefinite probation in her parents' care. As the guilty verdict came in, the black leaders in Montgomery knew something had to be done to initiate change. I told Mrs. Parks, as I told other leaders in Montgomery, that I thought Claudette Colvin's arrest was a good test case to end segregation on the buses. However, the black leadership in Montgomery at the time thought that we should wait. Fred Gray. So why did some black leaders think Rosa this way? Parks attorney. It was partly because of her color and because she was from the working poor. She lived in a little shack. It was a case of bougie blacks looking down on the working class blacks. Gwen Payton. Not only that, but according to an article in the National Women's History Museum website, because Colvin was a minor and Parks was an adult. Parks seemed more trustworthy as the face of the movement than Colvin. Parks had a lighter skin, which was considered more socially acceptable at the time. In the end, it was Colvin's pregnancy that caused several black leaders to not use her as the face of the movement. That's crazy. Like, I understand, like, the thought process of where they was coming from in terms of starting the movement and Rosa Parks being the face of the movement, but they should have still had had her like, you know, around in some type of way, let people know who she was. They they basically just brushed her to the side and it was like, all right, Rosa, this is what we're gonna do. You're gonna get on the bus. You know the story of Rosa Parks, you know, don't don't give up your seat. It was all planned. But I will say it was it was it was planned because they had a they had it was planned action, you know what I'm saying? They had a they had a real reason and a real motive to move the black or even just the country forward as when it comes to segregation on the buses. So it's not like they just did the shit for nothing. It was like not like they just said, oh, no, nah, this bougie black girl. We can't do that. I mean, they did do that, but shit. But, you know, um, it was I can't I, I'm, I'm kind of on both sides. Like they they was wrong for kind of brushing up to the side and putting Rose in the forefront. But at the same time, I understand what they was trying to do. And ultimately, you know. It ended segregation on the bus. So, shouts out to them. Black leaders believed it would not be good if the face of their movement was an unwed teenage mother. An article in See, they believed that the face of the movement, they didn't believe, you know, having a teen unwed teenage mother as the face of the movement. Which I can understand, you know what I'm saying? I can understand, but like I said, they should have still had a, you know, a part of it in some kind of way, you know? Some kind of way. They should have did something. In the Guardian titled, She Would Not Be Moved, describes Colvin's situation as a personal tragedy for her was seen as a political liability by the town's civil rights leaders. Author of Parting the Waters, Taylor Branch, wrote, Even if Montgomery Negroes were willing to rally behind an unwed pregnant teenager, which they were not, her circumstances would make her an extremely vulnerable standard barrier. If the white press got a hold of that information, they would have had a field day. They call her a bad girl and her case wouldn't have a chance. Rosa Parks. When asked why she thinks Rosa Parks gets all the credit when it came to the refusal of giving up your seat, 
She said that the NAACP and other black organizations felt that Parks would be a good icon because she was an adult and they didn't think teenagers were reliable. Colvin also added that Parks had the right hair and right look. Her skin texture was the kind that people associate with the middle class. She fit that profile. Mrs. Parks was a... So she was just... They basically said she light skin with good hair, so we're going to go with Rosa Parks, you know, to, to you know, be the face of this movement because she represents a middle class, which is wrong, but at the same time, bro, like I said, I understand where they was coming from and what they were trying to accomplish and trying to get done, and ultimately, you know, they made the right decision, obviously, so, you know, it worked, so I can't really be mad about it. Married woman. She was morally clean and she had a fairly good academic training. If there was ever a person we would have been able to use to break the situation that existed on the Montgomery city line, Rosa L. Parks was the woman to use. I probably would have examined a dozen more before I got there if Rosa Parks hadn't come along before I found the right one. Ed Nixon. According to sources, Rosa Parks was thrown off the bus on a Thursday and by Friday had several supporters and activists championing her. The Guardian article says that Colvin isn't bitter about the situation, but when she was a teenager, she did have feelings of resentment, sadness, and even bewilderment. They just dropped me. None of them spoke to me. They didn't see if I was okay. They never came and discussed it with my parents. They just didn't want to know me. It would have been different if I hadn't been pregnant, but if I had lived in a different place or been light-skinned, it would have made a difference too. They see, that's what I'm saying, like, fact that they just brushed her to the side like she didn't do what she did they, they shouldn't have done that that's why i would say they wrong it would have come and seen my parents and found me someone to marry once parks became the face of the movement colvin was more or less forgotten she told reporters that she sometimes attended rallies at churches i would sit in the back and no one would even know i was there to make matters worse colvin's son raymond came out as a light-skinned baby he came out kind of yellow, and then I was ostracized because I wouldn't say who the father was, and they thought it was a white man. He wasn't. I wasn't with it at all. All I could do is cry. After Rosa Parks was arrested for refusing to get out of her seat on December 1st, 1955, the Montgomery bus boycott began four days later on December 5th. That same month, black community leaders gathered together and began developing... Like, I always heard the Rosa Parks story was planned, you know, and now that I, I came across this yesterday, I decided to just look into it. And it's true, you know. You just can't deny facts. Like, it was it was planned because they were trying to get something done. So, if whoever mad at people saying that, you know, Rosa Parks, I seen a video say it, Kanye West say Rosa Parks was a plant. Like, he, he was telling the truth. She was a plant. They put her there. They, they, they took, uh, Claudette's story and just said, hey, this is actually a reason to, you know, get this boycott started so we can end the segregation on the bus, bus, you know what I'm saying? So instead of using her, Rosa, who was already a part of the NAACP, they just took her and said, look, you're going to be the face of this. This is how we're going to do it. Get on the bus, you know, sit in the front. Don't give up your seat. You know, they're going to take you to jail, so don't worry about it. We're going to come get you. Everything's going to be all right. And that's going to spark a boycott. That's going to spark, you know, us, spark us, you know, not riding the buses and start to walk in and eventually end segregation on the buses. You can't be mad. Like, you can't be mad at the fact that she wasn't the first, and you can't be mad at the fact that they got what they wanted to get done. So, it's a win-win situation. But they, they shouldn't, like I said, they shouldn't have let her just... Let Claudette just fall to the wayside like she didn't have a part in this. Like she didn't. Like she wasn't the first. Like like she was the first to stand on business. Like without nobody telling her. Rosa Parks wouldn't have done that had they not, you know, told her to do that. So she should have had like a, a, a voice in this. No matter how young she was. She dark skinned. Pregnant. It don't matter. She, she stood on business for us. So that's how I look at it. A federal lawsuit that would challenge the Alabama segregation laws. Attorneys Clifford Durr and Fred Gray worked on the case that would become known as Browder versus Gale, a fight against Montgomery bus segregation. Gray approached Colvin, Aurelia Browder, 
Susie McDonald, Mary Louise Smith, and Jeanette Reese, all of these women who had experienced discrimination by bus drivers who enforced the segregation policy. The name of the case comes from one woman previously listed, Browder. W.A. Gale was the mayor of Montgomery at the time. The women agreed to become plaintiffs in the case. However, Reese later dropped out of the case in February 1956 after intimidation. She and her husband were both threatened. Months later, on June 5, 1956, the district court found that the enforced segregation of black and white passengers on motor buses operating in the city of Montgomery violates the Constitution and laws of the United States because it denied equal protection that was promised under the 14th Amendment. Of course, the city would attempt to appeal the decision, but those attempts proved to be unsuccessful as the Supreme Court support the district court and ordered Alabama and Montgomery to desegregate its buses. On December 17, 1956, the Supreme Court denied the petition for rehearing on the December 20th. The ruling was implemented, officially ending the Montgomery bus boycott on that same day. In 1958, Colvin moved to New York City after having trouble finding work in Montgomery due to her involvement in the overturning of bus segregation. In 1969, she began work as a nurse's aide in Manhattan for 35 years, retiring in 2004. Ever since Colvin moved to New York, she was largely forgotten about. Her family has joined the fight for Colvin's recognition in the history books. The family asked the National Museum of African American History and Culture for Colvin to be giving more mention, as the museum does have a section dedicated to Rosa Parks. All we want is the truth. Why does history fail to get it right? Had it not been for Claudette Colvin, Ariel Broder, Susie McDonald, and Mary Louise Smith, there would have not been a Thurgood Marshall, a Martin Luther King, or a Rosa Parks. In December 2021, the juvenile court's records of Claudette Colvin were sealed and expunged. Montgomery County Juvenile Judge Calvin Williams signed an order for the records to be destroyed, including all references to her arrest. Colvin is still alive and is currently 82 years old at the time of the video release. Decades have gone by and her name still isn't as prominent as it should be. Claudette Colvin sacrificed herself when she refused to get out of her seat for the greater good of the civil rights movement. Now, as we approach the 67th anniversary of that day, Colvin is now getting the recognition she deserves. As a biopic about her life is in the early stages with Anthony Mackie directing and Sanaya Sidney portraying the civil rights icon. The film will surely inform everyone of Colvin's story and inspire an entirely new generation. In 2013, while interviewing for Democracy Now!, Colvin was asked, what would she like to say to young people today? And she responded with this, well, keep on moving. The struggle is not over. Every day presents a challenge and all that hard work that we have made progress as African Americans, we do not want to regress. We want to progress. So yeah, man, there y'all go, man. Claudette Colvin, she definitely should be more of a staple in to black in black history. Shouldn't have to go researching to figure out who she or who she is or what she did or know that she was the first to actually not give up a seat to refuse to give up a seat to a white person. Um, yeah, man. But yeah, shout out to Rosa Parks. You know she played her part, and um, eventually everything worked out in the way they planned it. So can't be mad at neither side, man. Can't be mad at neither side. Um. I will say, you know, at least back then, they they would work together to come up with solutions. You know what I'm saying? Everything they did, you know, putting her to the side, Claudette to the side, and placing Rosa as the face, it was for a positive solution. And I want to say, like, today, we have none of that. You know, when things go down with police brutality or anything go down when it comes to black Black, the black race um, That's what we missing today They really had They really sat down and came up with plans To they Came up with plans to execute To get solutions out of it They wasn't just acting off of impulse They wasn't acting off of emotion So that's why I, that's why I say things are different these days So shout out to them for even Having the courage To even do what they did Claudette and Rosa, she did what she did, but I'm not taking nothing from Rosa Parks, but Claudette should definitely be more of a staple in history, definitely should be taught 
about just as much as Rosa Parks was in history class growing up. So, yeah, man. Appreciate y'all for watching. Thanks for checking in with me. Till the next video. We out.